So in this question, we have been given a quadratic equation 2x square plus 3x plus 4 equal to 0. And it's also given that alpha and beta are the roots of this quadratic equation. Then we have to frame a quadratic equation whose roots are given by 2 alpha and 2 beta. All right. So this is the quadratic equation given in the question. If alpha and beta are the roots of this quadratic equation as given in the question, then we have to frame a quadratic equation whose roots are given by 2 alpha and 2 beta. So as you can see that the same transformation is being applied to alpha and beta. So what we are going to do is apply that same transformation to x. So if we assume y is equal to 2x, where we have y in terms of x, we'll calculate x in terms of y, which will be equal to y by 2. So we are going to replace x with y by 2 in f of x defined by 2x square plus 3x plus 4. So what is f of y by 2? f of y by 2 is equal to 2 times y by 2 the whole square plus 3 times y by 2 plus 4 and this is equal to 0. If I simplify this further, what I'll get is y square, 2y square plus 3y times 2 plus 4 times 4 is equal to 0. I've just taken LCM and the LCM is 4. If I simplify this further, I'll get 2y square plus 6y plus 16 is equal to 0. All right. Now, if I simplify this further by factoring out 2, what I'll get is y square plus 3y plus 8 is equal to 0. Now, we are going to just replace y with x so that we get an equation in x. So when I replace y with x, I'll get the equation x square plus 3x plus 8 is equal to 0. And this is the required quadratic equation whose roots are of the form 2 alpha and 2 beta. All right. Let's see which answer is correct. As you can see that option B matches with our answer x square plus 3x plus 8 equal to 0. Then we can say that option B is the correct answer to this question. In this question, we have been given a quadratic equation, 2x squared plus 5x plus 1 is equal to 0. And it's also given that alpha and beta are the roots of this quadratic equation. Then we have to frame a quadratic equation whose roots are of the form 2 alpha plus 1 and 2 beta plus 1. All right. So this is the quadratic equation given to us in the question. It's also given that it has two roots of the form alpha and beta beta, then we have to frame a quadratic equation whose roots are given by 2 alpha plus 1 and 2 beta plus 1. As you can see that the same transformation is being applied to both alpha and beta. So what are we going to do is apply that same transformation to x and we'll get y is equal to 2x plus 1. As you can see, we have y in terms of x. What do we do next is calculate x in terms of y. And we cal when we calculate x in terms of y, we'll get x is equal to y minus 1 divided by 2. Now we are going to put x is equal to y minus 1 divided by 2 in f of x defined by 2x squared plus 5x plus 1. So what will be f of y minus 1 divided by 2? It will be 2 multiplied by y minus 1 divided by 2 the whole square plus 5 times y minus 1 divided by 2 plus 1 is equal to 0. So if I take LCM, the LCM would be 4 and it will be equal to 2 times y minus 1 the whole square plus 10 times y minus 1 plus 4 is equal to 0. All right. Now we are going to expand this further. So this is the quadratic. So this is the quadratic equation that we got. If we expand it further, we'll get 2 times y square plus 1 minus 2y plus 10y minus 10 plus 4 is equal to 0. If I simplify it further, what I'll get is 2y square minus 4y plus 2 
plus 10y minus 6 is equal to 0. All right. Simplifying it further, we'll get 2y square plus 6y minus 4 is equal to 0. Now, as you can see, we can factor out 2. When we factor out 2, we'll get y square plus 3y minus 2 is equal to 0. All right. That's now the last step. Replace y with x. When we replace y with x, we'll get x square plus 3x minus 2 equal to 0. And that's the required quadratic equation whose roots are of the form 2 alpha plus 1 and 2 beta plus 1. All right. Now let's see which option is correct. As you can see, that option D matches with the answer that we got here, which is x squared plus 3x minus 2 equal to 0. Hence, we can say that option D is the correct answer to this question. So in this question, we have been given a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equal to 0. It's also given that both the roots of this quadratic equation are negative and b is less than 0, then which of the following statements are correct? All right. As you can see, this is a quadratic equation given to us, ax squared plus bx plus c equal to 0. If we assume it has two roots of the form, alpha and beta, then it's given in the question that both the roots are negative means alpha is less than 0, beta is less than 0. If both alpha is less than 0, beta is less than 0, we can say that alpha beta is going to be greater than 0 or c by a is going to be greater than 0. If c by a is going to be greater than 0, then we can say that both a and c are of same sign. All right. Now, another piece of information which is given to us in the question is that B is less than 0. All right. That's an important piece of information that B is less than 0. If both the roots are negative, then we can clearly say that the x coordinate of the vertex, which is minus B by 2A, will be less than 0. All right. Now, we know already that B is less than 0. That means the negative nature of B and the minus sign in front of it will compensate each other. If they both compensate each other, we can say that A is going to be less than 0. And we know that both A and C are of the same sign. Then if, then if A is less than 0, C is going to be less than 0 and the graph will look like this. All right. So we have found out that both A and C are of the same sign and they both are negative. Now let's see which option is correct. As you can see that in option B, we have A less than 0 and C less than 0. Then we can say that option B is the correct answer to this question. So in this question, we have been given a quadratic equation in x containing different log terms. It's also given that alpha and beta are the roots of this quadratic equation. Then we have to frame a quadratic equation whose roots are given by negative alpha and negative beta. All right. So this is the equation given to us in the question. Now we are going to compress this big quadratic equation into a smaller quadratic equation using different properties of logarithm. I'm going to start with this triple log right here. So we can write log of 216 to the base 6 as log of 6 cubed to the base 6, which is equal to 3. Now this 3 becomes the input for log with base 3. So what we get is log of 3 to the base 3, which is equal to 1. Now this 1 becomes the input for log with base 2. So what do we get here is log of 1 to the base 2, which is equal to 0. So this triple log simplifies to give us 0. Now we are going to simplify the other log terms. I'm going to start with constant term right here. I'm going to simplify that using these two properties of log. And if we use this property, what we will get is 3 to the power log of 2 to the base 3 minus 2 to the power log of 3 to the base 2 can be written as 2 minus 3, which is equal to minus 1. 
all right so we have simplified the constant term also now the only term in log left is this term now this can be written as 2 to the power 5 multiplied by log of 4 to the base 2 which can be simplified and written as 2 to the power log of 4 to the power 5 to the base 2 which is equal to 4 to the power 5. Now we have a square root term here. So square root of 4 to the power 5 can be written as square root of 2 to the power 10 which is equal to 2 to the power 5. We have simplified this. This is equal to 0. We have simplified this. It is equal to minus 1. And we have simplified this with the square root sign and it is equal to 2 to the power 5. So the final equation that we will get is x square minus multiplied by 3 plus 2 to the power 5 multiplied by x plus 2 equal to 0, which can be simplified as x square minus 35x plus 2 equal to 0. Now, this equation has roots of the form alpha and beta. Then we have to frame a quadratic equation of the form minus alpha and minus beta. What are we going to do here is we are going to replace x with negative x and what we will get is negative x the whole square minus 35 times negative x plus 2 is equal to 0 which can be written as x square plus 35x plus 2 equal to 0 and that is our required quadratic equation which is same as option c. So in this question, we have been given a quadratic equation, which is x minus 12, the whole square, plus 2x minus 24 times x plus 12, plus x plus 12, the whole square is equal to 0. Now, the roots of this quadratic equation are decreased by 12, and a new transformed equation is formed. And we have to comment about the roots of that new transformed equation. All right. So this is the equation given to us in the question. If we assume it has roots alpha and beta, then we have to first frame a quadratic equation whose roots are given by alpha minus 12 and beta minus 12. And then we have to comment about the nature of the, nature of the roots of the transformed equation, all right? So what we are going to do is, we are going to put y is equal to x minus 12 because that's the transformation we have applied to alpha and beta. As we have y in terms of x, all we have to do is calculate x in terms of y and we can say x is equal to y plus 12. Now we are going to replace x with y plus 12 in this quadratic equation. And when we do that, we will get y plus 12 minus 12 the whole square plus 2 times y plus 12 minus 12 times y plus 12 plus 12 plus y plus 12 plus 12, the whole square is equal to 0, all right? Now, if I simplify it further, I'll get y square plus 2y times y plus 24 plus y plus 24, the whole square is equal to 0, all right? So this is the equation that we have got here. Now, if you will closely observe this equation, you will see we have a square, we have b square, we have 2ab. Basically, we have a square plus 2ab plus b square equal to 0. Now, we know that a square plus 2ab plus b square can be written as a plus b the whole square, where a is y and b is y plus 24. So, we will have y plus y plus 24 the whole square is equal to 0, which can be simplified as y plus 12 the whole square is equal to 0 and we'll get two roots y is equal to minus 12 and minus 12. Now what can we comment about these two roots? Clearly we can say that they are equal and we can also say that they are rational. Hence we can say that option b is the correct answer to this question. Rational and equal roots.